Today, friends, we are going to make a Tinkercad Christmas clicky fidget. So let's get cracking. Step one is to find the template. We're going to type that by doing bit.ly slash hl fidget one. When you type this, it takes you to my gingerbread fidget. We are here because it has a template that you can copy and tinker. Just don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad before you copy and tinker. Give a reaction. Now, of course, we came here to get these two pieces, but you can also print this project. If you want to learn more about the tutorial, I explain it with these notes. You can also find the full tutorial at my YouTube channel, and I will put it up here in the cards. We need to take these parts and make them so that we can use them forever though. We're gonna do that by making them a your creation. Simply click on your creations, the shape, and choose create shape. I'm gonna call this key hole. I'm gonna lock the part size. I gotta make sure it's a hole and I'm gonna save that shape. Notice it shows up right here. It only takes a moment. And from now on, every Tinkercad project I create, I can reuse that part. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Once again, create shape. I'm going to call this one key cap. You do need to wait for it to arrive. I'm going to lock the part size because those key caps are identical. Keep it a hole and hit save shape. Now, since I have done this twice, let me show you how to delete them. You can simply hit delete just like this and confirm and click here and delete and confirm. But you can see I've now got those shapes available for our next project, which we're gonna start right now by clicking back on the Tinkercad dashboard. And then we can simply hit create new 3D design. Let's start by naming it. We're gonna call this clicky fidget tree. Now, just because I want you to remember how it works, we're gonna grab those your creations. Remember we've got both of the holes that we're gonna use a bit later. We're going to return now quickly to the basic shapes and we're going to build a Christmas tree with the roof. When you bring it out, notice it lays flat like this. We're going to simply find this rotation handle. It's usually easier if you do it from a corner and we're going to stand it up 90 degrees. Just like that, notice it's 22 and a half degrees inside. If you go outside, it's one degree at a time. If you hold shift, it is 45 degrees per rotation. When it stands up, it's a little bit below zero. We're going to fix that by hitting D to drop. We're going to turn this into a quick Christmas tree by clicking on it, choosing Control D, and then don't touch your mouse for a minute. We're just going to use the arrow keys to move down five clicks. Now we're going to hold Shift and we're going to stretch this up. See how it says 20? You're going to make it say 24 and let go. Without touching anything else, do Control D again and again and again until we have five of those little roofs. I accidentally made six, so I'm gonna just click on the last one and hit delete. Now these are all different heights. That does not matter at all. I'm gonna nudge them out just a little further. So I'm gonna go five clicks down, four clicks down, three clicks down, and two clicks down. So I'm just adjusting them so that we've got enough room for our fidget tree. Now I want you to see how this is stacked. And I'm gonna teach you real quickly that SVGs are only two dimensional. So we're gonna grab all of that and do Control G to group. And then we're gonna export this tree as an SVG. Notice it says for laser cutting, we're gonna use that for 3D printing. So I'm gonna call this clicky fidget tree and I'm gonna hit save. And then I'm gonna just take these parts and I'm gonna move them over here. We don't need them anymore, but I want you to see how this SVG works. Choose import, bring in that SVG. Notice it was in my downloads. Click open, choose art, keep the measurements, and hit import. After a moment it arrives, and this proves that it takes 3D shapes and gives you the 2D shape, and it also gives you this. If we switch to outer line, and choose round and bump up the quality. It gives us a round tree. Of course, we do want the line width to be something like two instead of five. Bingo, we have got a super cool tree shape that we can use for the rest of this project. Let's quickly start building our base. I'm gonna bring this inside. I'm gonna select the two of them, choose L for a line, and I wanna make it to the middle and to the middle. 
When I look at this, I want it to be back two clicks. Notice that is nudging one millimeter per click. That feels like a better spot for my clicker. Note it is absolutely fine that this is touching the edges. It just can't be outside the base shape. Now that we're happy with this placement, let's shift select the cap, choose L for align, make sure the cap is the boss, and we want it to be the center this way as well. That way they'll match. Let's click on our brown shape and let's raise its height up. And then the number I want you to type is 12 and press enter. I want you to do control D and set another one to default. After a moment, you can see it fills in. And then we're going to select all of that and do L for a line. And we want everything to come to the top. This is going to make it so that part cuts out in a minute. Now for this to press down easily, we want a gap around the walls. So this is where this gets really cool. Click on our shape and do control D, shift nudge to move it over. Let's select the two of those, choose L for a line, and we want to put it in the middle. So I'm making this one the master and choosing center. We already know that those two are lined up. We're going to set this height to, to 4.25. And then we're going to select those two and do L for a line in the same way we want it to come to the top. So that way it's going to cut out. Now remember I said we want a gap. So instead of two, we're going to just change this to one and press enter. Just like that, we've got a half millimeter gap all the way around our original shape. Of course, we want to fill that in as well. So we're going to do control D and set the other one to default. Those match up perfect. And bingo, we can select it and do control G to group. That is already your cap for your clicky fidget. Now we're going to use that same SVG skill to make the outside. I'm going to select those two and I'm going to simply do export. Notice I did not grab the hole. And once again, we're doing an SVG, but this one will be wider. I'm going to call this clicky fidget tree and I'm going to put a two after it because we added a two millimeter wall and save it as an SVG. Then we can simply import that new clicky fidget tree to SVG as art and keep the measurements. When it arrives, we simply want to make it outer line again. I'm going to make the width one. I'm going to make the corners round and the quality maxed. And then instead of 12, we're going to raise it up to 16. At this point, friends, we're going to select those parts and do control G to group them. Bam. All right, so there it is. Let's do a quick test. I don't want to move these because they're aligned. So I'm just going to simply do control D and I'm going to take this one and put it on top. If we do W for work plane, I can click right there, hit D for drop. Just for fun, I'm going to set the color to green. And now let's line those up to make sure we didn't skip a step. Shift select on the pink one, L for a line, make the pink one the boss. And I want it to be centered and it already is centered and check it out. There is the gap. Now when this prints, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. That will be the top. Now you can decorate these. I will show you that in a minute. First right now, I'm going to get this set up to print so that we can have a clicky fidget to play with. Let's set the work plane back down on the ground. I click W for work plane and I click right here. And I'm going to export these as two pieces. You could make an OBJ file, but I don't really enjoy it because I end up with all these zipped OBJ files. I find this to take the exact same time and it works well for me. Notice selected shape STL. I'm in my 3D modeling folder. I'm going to call this clicky fidget tree bottom. And now let's click on the top. Once again, export. Selected shape, STL. And this one's going to be called Clicky Fidget Tree Top. And save. Now we can bounce to our 3D printing software. I'm using Bamboo Lab Studio. And we're going to add those two files together. Open, and I do want it to be a single object, multiple parts. Now I'm going to try and print this super quickly. We could make it all green. Instead, I'm going to make the back white by clicking on objects. And I'm going to make that bottom print with the white. And then I also want to make these print separately. I'm going to do that by going back to global. And under others, I'm going to do print sequence by object. 
I'm going to right now split these two objects. Notice if we click Arrange, I'll let it auto-rotate, and it'll spread them out so that they can print in separate colors even faster. Friends, let's hit Slice Plate and see how long this is going to take. Bingo, we're going to have it done in a total of 22 minutes. Let's hit Print Plate, double-check our colors, and send it to the 3D printer. After a moment, it bounces to the device menu. And once it finishes downloading, we can click play and monitor everything from afar. So while that's printing, let's talk about decorating these. Right now I have moved to Canva. This is simply an Instagram post and I added a chunk of text just like this. Once you add it, you can pick your fonts. I chose this one called Leccarelli. Notice I added Mary and then I went to the effects and I did the curve. We can bend it however we want. Once I completed these, I wanted to make them into SVGs. My favorite way is to use my screen capture tool. I can simply grab that little file. Once I select it, I can hit finish and it saves it as a PNG. I did that same step for the word Christmas and I also did it for my logo. And then I switched to picksvg.com and I upload those pictures. Once I find the image, I simply bring it in and then I always switch to Internal 2. It makes a nice smooth design that we can download and bring into Tinkercad. I'm going to just put these in my downloads folder. I'm going to change that one to say Mary. And hit enter. Let me show you how to bring those in. Import. Choose file. Once again, find where you saved all your parts you're decorating with and open them one at a time. Choose art, and then you're going to have to pick a size that you want to use. I think I want mine to be about 25 millimeters to fit in our tiny tree. Notice when you press enter, it scales both, and you can choose import. There's my word Mary. Notice to fit it on the tree, I'm going to still have to scale it, so I'm just going to shift scale it to get to the size I want. And then for decorating, let's do this. Control G to group. If we had ungrouped that, which I had and then we rotate it 180 degrees. Now we can take our words and bring them where we want to put them. That's where I'm going to put the word Mary. I'm going to put the work plane up on the top and do D to drop. I'm going to set my nudge to 0.5. That's how far in I'm going to cut in. And then for each piece, we're going to do Control D, make it a hole, Control down to sink it in, and repeat that for the other pieces as well. So I've got the word Christmas that I made, D to drop. I'll line them up in a minute. I've also got my HL Mod Tech logo, D to drop so it's up on top. I'm gonna start by selecting that whole bunch and do an L for a line so that they're centered. And now I can click on the parts and get them aligned. I'm gonna take these two, notice I'm just grabbing the corner, and I'm gonna nudge them a little further up. And I think that's going to work pretty darn dandy. I'm going to check this right now. I want the hole, which I was able to select. And I'm going to hide it. I'm going to click on the green one, and I'm going to lock it. I'm going to click on this hole, and I'm going to hide it. I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to lock it. I'm going to click on this one and hide it. I'm going to click on this one and lock it. Now when I bring everything back, I can make sure that I grab the hole. Notice it shows that. And I'm going to do control down to sink it in that 0.5 millimeters. I'm going to click on this one and do control down to sink it in that 0.5 millimeters. I already had sunk that one in. You can see it right there. So then when we grab the seven objects and group them, the three on top will not get grouped because they were locked. Give it a moment to do the grouping. And bingo, now we are left with just the top pieces. I'm going to click on all of these and unlock them now. Make sure they're all set to 0.5. And then I'm going to do control down to put them in the same spot real quickly. I just want to hide that though. So you can see that that's where they're going to be. Control down. Control down arrow. Notice the 0.5 nudge that we choose right here is what gets them to the right size. This one I need to choose 0.5 for the height and then control down to sync it in. Now real quickly in Bamboo Lab Studio, I'm gonna print this one as green. 
So I'm going to just make it green. I'm going to take my little YouTube logo and I'm going to make it a red. Let's go with a preset red. And then I'm going to print the Merry and the Christmas white. Once again, I'm going to do these using separate STL files because I enjoy that more than the OBJ files. Let's put the work plane back down to the ground. W for work plane. And then we're going to take this and rotate it 180 degrees. Don't use mirror or your project will be backwards. There's my rotation of 180 degrees. If you look underneath, that's going to print absolutely awesome. Now we do have to export this differently. So I'm going to export just the tree, selected shape, STL. Notice this one does take a lot longer because it is more complex with all those letters cut in. And I'm going to save that one as top. And then I'm going to hide it. Now I want to take the two white pieces. So I'm shift selecting those. Export, selected shapes, STL. Of course, reminding you this does take longer because of the complexity of those curves. And of course, name this one. I'm going to call this Mary. And then I'm going to select the HL Mod Tech logo. Export, once again, selected shape, STL. And I'm going to call this one the logo and hit save. And finally, I am going to export the base because you never know, I may have changed something between the steps. And base. And back to Bamboo Studio, you can see that project did finish less than 23 minutes. Let's go back to prepare. I am going to save that file, save project. And let's start a brand new project for this one that is more complex. Once again, we are going to add all of the parts. This time I put them in my downloads folder because I'm not sure I'll keep them. I've got all four and we're going to hit open. Yes, I still do want a single object, multiple parts. Now we can pick our colors back with the object mode. Once again, the base is going to be white. I'm going to make the logo red. I'm going to make the words Mary white. And the tree green you can see that turns out pretty darn slick. And because we had those as separate pieces, it's so easy to color them. And because we color them in a half millimeter, that color stands out a little better. The only catch with this, of course, is after we hit slice plate, our 22 minute project is now creeping up close to an hour. And as a former classroom teacher, I was always trying to get the prints done faster so more students could have them. And about 20 minutes later, a sweet multicolor fidget ready for assembly. All right, so these are the keyboard switches. I will have a link to these in the description. They have this little edge on them that we're going to snap in. It's easy to spot the edge where that connects, and you simply push it in until it snaps. Grab your tree piece, flip it over, and connect it as well. Clicky fidgets, just like that. Friends, I hope you found that fun and useful, and you can see you can apply those skills to make it any kind of clicky fidget that you're dreaming of. Friends, I want to quickly say thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Of course, you can check the link down below to learn more. There is a free level, but I also want to let you know about a new benefit. I now have an online course. You'll get a new lesson each week as long as you stay at that level. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or hit subscribe you're helping hl mod tech get just a little bit bigger which absolutely makes my day friends have a glorious day and keep tinkering